In this example, we're going to look at the Film Damage plugin from GenArch Sapphire Plugins Package. And this is running inside of Nuke uh, under the OFX plugin interface. So these same plugins will also work inside of uh, Toxic, Fusion, and Scratch, so other uh, OFX-based compositors and uh, DI systems. So Film Damage is going to go ahead and add imperfections that one would typically find with older film, uh, not well-preserved film. So it's going to add dust and hair and a bit of flicker and defocus. And first thing I'm going to do is actually play back the source clip for you. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at the difference once film damage is applied. So that's our source clip. Uh, and let's say we want to pretend this was shot you know, 20, 30 years ago. Say there, were, there was wall jumping was a popular sport 20 or 30 years ago in, in Japan, maybe. But we'll go ahead and uh, apply the Film Damage plugin. So to do that, I'm just going to go to my effect uh, palette here where it says Sapphire. Go ahead and go down to the Sapphire Stylize family and apply Film Effect. Uh, the nice thing, I don't know if you can see it that well, but the nice thing with Nuke is that all the different effects have uh, have uh, little icons next to it that actually give you a little sample picture of what every single plugin does. But we'll go ahead and apply film damage. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but it's already done uh, quite a bit of grain adjustment, added some vignetting to it. And as we play this back, you'll see some of the hairs and dust and whatnot start to appear. So the cool thing is it adds all these different elements, such as dust and hair and scratches. Um, but then there are also a lot of sub-controls, so you can really start fine-tuning and tweaking all the different elements if you really want. Uh, in this particular shot here, um, we can start taking out some of the color, uh, which is probably one of the first things you want to do if you want to give it that look of being really um, unpreserved, uh, not well-maintained film. So that's actually in the color correction options here. So I can open up this arrow next to color correction, and I've got all these different controls. So saturation is the main thing we want to play with here. So we can go ahead and start to pull some of the saturation out of the image. It's going to just start to drain some of the color out. Again, give it that, oh, that much older of a feel. Um, as we move beneath that, we've got all these master controls. So you can, hear, you can see we have stain density here, then dust density, then hairs, scratches, uh, shake amplitude, flicker, defocus, and vignette darkness. So those are all the master controls. But within each of these, there are a lot of sub-controls. So the first thing I want to do is just start playing with the stains, so adding more stains just by turning up the stain density. As I do that, you see different stains are going to start to populate the screen. So we've got a whole bunch more stains here. And as I play this back, you'll see quite a, quite a bit more stains coming through than before, um, sort of randomly spattered throughout the image. Now, if we want to, we can actually go ahead in here and start to adjust some of the uh, details of the stains. Let's just move to a frame that's got uh, some nice stains on it. Maybe in the beginning, I think I saw some. That's pretty good. So we can look at our stain details. So I'm going to click to the uh, arrow to the left of the stain details options. And you can see all these different stain controls. So we're looking at the, uh, the variation of the density of each of the different stains, the stain on the print versus the stain on the negative, uh, the size of the stain, all these elements you can control separately. And the same goes, again, for everything else that you see in the film damage clip, such as hair, um, scratches, flicker and whatnot. So any of these uh, different elements can be controlled. So we can make the stains really small here as I start to take those down. We can change our stain color. So by default you're going to have uh, black and brown I believe. We can make these black and white if we want. So you can see the white stains coming on there. And I'll go ahead and close that up. <clears throat> so again a whole lot of different controls. But let's say you don't want any stains at all. Um, you can pretty much bypass all of these sub controls here and just turn off your stain density. If we want no stains at all just go ahead and take our stain density down to zero and uh, it ignores <clears throat> any of the sub-controls that we were playing with before. So in this case, we can take our stain density down to zero. <clears throat> Excuse me, hairs is another similar example. We can go to our, our overall hairs control, and we'll start to pull up the number of hairs. And uh, you'll see those start to come on screen here. And as we play this back, you'll see that many more hairs. Uh, these hairs have actually been scanned. Uh, they're actual human hair. They've been scanned at really high resolution, so they'll work great in your uh, higher, higher definition projects and your film projects. So we've got bunch of hairs there and then let's say we want to start controlling the color of the hair or the opacity of the hair. Let's just jump to a frame that's got a lot of hairs on it. We've got the same thing that we had with our dust. We have all of our hair details. So I'm going to open up my hair details and look at all the different sub controls like the persistence, how long does it stay on screen, how fast does it wiggle, what's the opacity of the hair, how big is the hair, the color, and so on and so forth. So you can really get down to the nitty gritty and start adjusting any one of these elements. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip over, uh, skip to the scratches option to show you one particular parameter that you might find useful that's not necessarily evident uh, when first looking at it. So I'm looking at my scratches now, and I want to go ahead and start turning up the number of scratches. So we're just going to turn up the scratches. You can see we have quite a lot of scratches in this image. Play this back. And what's nice about our film damage plugin is you can actually move your scratches around. So let's say, uh, as we have in these shots, you have a, 
an, an image that you don't want to be affected by the scratches. Let's say it's a, it's a focus point and you want a lot of scratches in the overall shot. You just don't want them laid on top of your image. I can go down to my scratches details here, open those up and show you this particular control for uh, scratch area center. And as I go ahead and zoom back out, I'm going to start adjusting that. I can actually start adjusting the scratches and moving them left to right. So what I can do is actually offset them as I turn the scratch area center to a negative value here. I have offset them from my source image so this guy in the middle doesn't actually have any scratches on him and we can uh, leave him unaffected as the shot goes through. So that's a very a neat, uh, useful um, control we have. Another uh, less obvious control is in the shake details. So I've got my overall shake amplitude, and I'm going to go ahead and turn that up first. And what shake does is that's your camera shake. That's your camera roll. It's the jitter, and I'll go ahead and turn it up and start playing back the clip for you. And you'll see in a little bit here, there should be a bit of camera roll. You've got a bit of bumpiness going on there. And um, go ahead and just turn up a little bit more so you can see it some more here. We turn up the shake amplitude. We should really see. So there you're seeing a lot of camera roll. Um, very nice, but let's say you don't want the uh, the borders quite as, as fat or quite as you want them thinner. So you've got your borders here. We can go to our shake details and look at that. And as we go ahead and open up our shake details, we've got something called the inner frame border height. And this basically just tells me how fat is the border or how thin is the border. So if we take it to a smaller value, it's going to close up that border between the top and the, and the bottom frame. And if we turn it all the way up, right, you're going to see a much, much fatter border. So those are some of the things you can do with inner frame border height, and uh, as well as adding some motion blur, which is pretty cool. Um, give you that much more of a, of a herky-jerky movement to it. So that's the motion blur uh, added to the shake. Uh, and you can see here at the bottom, there's also options for flicker and defocus. So I'll show you those really quickly. Um, there's a flicker here, which will give you more camera flicker. And uh, defocus, which will shift the image in and out of focus. We'll go ahead and turn that up a little bit as well as add some vignetting. So the vignette darkness is just going to add that dark outer border, that circle to the outside. Uh, and if we wanted to, we could step in and change the, even the vignette color. So I've got my vignette darkness I just added, as well as vignette details. I can go ahead and show you down here um, the vignette radius, vignette softness, and whatnot. You actually, I, I apologize, you can't change the color. We have a separate vignette plugin that you can use to actually change the color of the vignetting. So let's say we wanted a, a vignette, maybe a, a blue vignette for some reason. Um, easy enough to do, we'll just go ahead and take the vignette darkness down here. Uh, so there's no vignetting, we'll go ahead and add another plugin. So we'll go back to the Sapphire Stylized family and add the vignette. So now you can see it's added a vignette over the outer border. And we can go close up our film damage here and just go to our vignette and there's a vignette color. So if we want that weird blue vignette, <laughs> easy enough to do. Go ahead and pick uh, something in the blue hue there and uh, click out of that. Oh, let me make sure I was selecting it right. Sorry about that. I had the wrong slider. There we go. So we've got a bit of a blue vignette. There we go. So that's our bluish tint vignette. And we can do that. So this is just simply adding a second plugin. And now we've got both our film damage and our blue vignette going on there. Uh, so that's Sapphire Film Damage along with a little bonus showing a vignette uh, for Sapphire plugins running on Nuke.